let me give you a mask review. I can't breathe and when I put on my glasses, I breathe out hot air up into them, fog my glasses and then I can't see. So not only can I not breathe, I can't see. Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Diana and I am an international flight attendant. As you know, a lot of things have changed since my last video where I talked about the effect coronavirus has on crew. In this video, I wanted to give a little bit more insight into how this virus is affecting the aviation industry. What were the initial effects? When this virus was first announced, there really wasn't that much difference in my work life. Nothing really seemed to have changed. Nothing was different on board. It was then announced that majority of the airlines, if not all of them, were cutting their China flights and were in the process of organizing trips to Wuhan to get the Australians back to Australia. Even as we were doing these flights, we were told that the risks were low according to the health organizations. However, we were given precaution packs such as hand sanitizers, masks to take with us to China at this stage. So at that stage, we felt no risk. When we got to China, it was announced that certain countries were banning people that had been to China to come into their country. First, it was if you had been to Wuhan and then it changed to just general mainline China. How did this affect us now? As countries were changing their policies rapidly, it began to impact our rosters significantly. For example, those who had now been to China were not allowed to go into Singapore. I had heard stories of people operating to Singapore and then the announcement being announced while they were on board and when they arrived in Singapore, they were not allowed to enter and had to go straight home. So imagine doing like a 10, seven hour to 10 hour shift only to be sent back home on a plane again, cabin fever. Am I right, ladies? We started to be told to self-isolate when we got home for 14 days. However, crew were exempt as long as we were taking the proper precautions, e.g. washing your hands and wearing the mask. Like I said, crew were exempt. However, coming into Australia started to become a bit fussy. If we had been to China in the last 14 days, we would then get taken aside to another side of the airport and have our temperature tested and all that. We were to wear a mask at all time coming into Australia or we would be growled out by the customs officers. And some of you probably, if, if you've traveled, you probably know how uncomfortable the mask is, especially because if it's covering your face and preventing you from breathing, it's doing its job. However, walking around with your big suitcases and trying to lug them around becomes a bit exhausting and you can't breathe in there because it was blocking your nose and your mouth from breathing. So I had one custom officer snap at me because I had lifted it to talk to her and she's like, you have to wear it. And I was like, oh, okay, all right, come on. I just, you can't understand me when I've, I've got it on. But so yeah, it started to become a bit, um, a bit hostile when we would come in. Like you could tell that they were kind of angry at us for being exempt. So what was the first noticeable change? So the first thing I started to notice was that there were just less people on board. And in saying that my job started to become a lot more easier. There was a lot more time off for our break because we would finish the service very, very quickly. The thing with flight cancellations is that they're very common around this time because it's the shoulder season and people aren't flying as much anyway. So a lot of flights would usually get canceled around this time anyway. So yeah, flights became super easy and I don't think the cabin crew were complaining about that. So now what has been announced? It has officially been announced that it is a pandemic, which means it's internationally spreading. So the Australian and New Zealand government has announced that anyone coming into the country must self-isolate for 14 days and that you shouldn't travel unless it is essential. Crew are now exempt, but 
given that it's operational. So, so what's the initial issue? So the issue for crew is that if we commute, which means we don't live in the city that we're based in. If where you are commuting from is international, you now cannot go on your scheduled flights because you have to self-isolate for 14 days because you commuting is not part of the exemption. It has to be operational. And if you were on a holiday, for example, same thing applies. So you saw a lot of crew rushing to make the timeline because if they didn't come back, they weren't allowed to work. And if you don't work, then do you take leave or do you take unpaid leave if you don't have leave scheduled? So what this government regulation has now done is, so yeah, those crew that are not in the country, if they don't make it back in time, they are forced by the just by this government regulation to either take leave or unpaid leave, which is, or just drop your trips, which then causes a headache for our schedulers because now they have to decide, they have to try to figure out who's on standby and what, who can replace trips. So it's, it's all a mess right now. So yeah, now our schedulers have the difficult task in reorganizing all our schedules. And then the question was posed, what happens if you, uh, operating but in your operations you have to be a passenger to get to another destination and operate out of there are you exempt then so as long as it's work related for cabin crew you are exempt so we've talked about exemption and who's exempt you've got aviation crew cargo ships and you've got cruise ships that are exempt I think one of the reasons that we are exempt is that we need crew to bring back Australians in another country and New Zealanders that are in another country back to their, their country so that they don't get stranded in, if this was to turn into anything more dire. And I also think it's because we are just more experienced in hygiene because we have to do it all the time. Aviation is very unhygienic especially up in the plains and in the skies and being exposed to different diseases that we've already adopted the proper precautions as it is so why do we need to self-isolate i'm going to link a video by dr mike down below because i think he explains it in the best way i'll just paraphrase for now so it is now coming out that you can have the virus and not show any symptoms and you can be a carrier. In the big scheme of things, cancellations and isolation is a positive thing. This will benefit us in the long run. We need to limit the virus spread to offer community protection to those who cannot protect themselves. For example, the elderly, the immune compromised, those who have chronic diseases. When we isolate, when we're a carrier and we're completely fine, we protect those who cannot protect themselves. But yeah, if you wanna know more, just watch the video I link down below. So what can you do to do your part? Wash your hands, self-isolate, avoid crowds. If you've been to big crowds, avoid the immune compromised and don't hoard materials. Like just buy what you need, the shops are fine. The only reason they're not on the shelves is because people are hoarding it, not because they're out of stock. It's just that when they do the inventory, they've accounted for a specific amount. But if you're taking more than you usually do, then obviously things are gonna be empty. The isolation is a good thing because it protects those who cannot protect themselves, like I said. We need to minimize the spread in order to protect our healthcare professionals from getting overrun. We can't have a whole lot of people getting sick at the exact same time with, when there's no beds to treat them. There's no room, there's no beds, there's no equipment, there's no testing kits, everything. So when everyone self-isolates, it means that the virus is spreading slower which means that our healthcare professionals can keep up with the ongoing toll of people getting sick from the coronavirus. We can't have a lot of people getting sick at the same time with no one to treat them. What will be the effects going forward? Although isolation is a good thing and it's a very good demonstration of solidarity and it's helping everyone, not just the healthy, but every everyone that could be compromised. The aviation industry will suffer significantly. There is already talks of 
flights being cut by 90%, people are being laid off and rosters will take longer to come out and we might not be flying at all. Even though we're exempt, if the everyday person isn't flying, then I, neither are we. So where does that leave me? I don't know. Okay, so that is the end of my video. Thank you so much for watching and sticking around. It's tough times ahead. Everyone be kind to each other. Stuff isolate. Take your precautions. Do what you need to do. And if you do feel any symptoms, don't hesitate to go get tested. Okay, thanks. I've got another couple of videos coming up from a Joburg and Singapore and Osaka that I did in the last couple of weeks. So that will be up soon. I don't know what my next video is going to be because yeah, obvious reasons. Okay. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks so much. Bye.